Time to talk some more about safety. This is mainly for those who do sword practice on their own without supervision by a competent instructor. And I can imagine that some of you are probably thinking something like, enough with the boring talk. I just want to hit crap with a sword. Understandable, but there are some things that can mess you up long term. So you might not want to do that. And one of them is something I see occasionally, uh, thrusts with a broken wrist position. This means broken as in broken structure, not necessarily as in the actual bone breaks. This is more of a tendon damage issue. So what a lot of people do when they throw a thrust straight forward is this. And I, I hate to even, to even show that. So they just have the hammer grip and they just tilt it forward and thrust like this. So this feels really awkward. And the problem is there's a lot of stress on the tendons here. So everything is overextended. It's, it's already in, in this awkward strain position. And if you then thrust against something that, that offers resistance and pushes back, this is going to put a lot of pressure on there and it's folding the hand down even more. So this can be really dangerous. And there are probably some folks who would tell you, ah, that's nonsense. I've been doing this for years and I'm fine, but they may be fine now. But this is something that accumulates and gradual change you can't really pick up very well. So it may be that in 10 years or 20 years, you suddenly have chronic wrist pain and tendonitis and, and whatnot. Or it may be that one day when you deliver a particularly powerful thrust, suddenly something snaps and you're in trouble. So that just prevents you from practicing for a while. So it's better to prevent it. And also this is not the greatest way to deliver a thrust anyway. So there is a reason why you see on side swords and rapiers, you have these rings here. So same on the rapier. Well, in addition to the cross guard and the rings and, and the Pappenheimer style shell, you also have the rings right next to the ricasso, which is the, the blonde section of the blade here. So the purpose of that is you grab it like this. And that facilitates a much better grip for thrusting. So if you have the finger here, this changes the entire position of the hand and the wrist. So let me show that from the other side. So now you're not thrusting like this in the overextended position, but you're actually thrusting like this. So it's much more in line with the forearm. So I'm sure you can easily see the difference between this and this. This is much more stable. It's, it's actually easier to hold that way as well. And it's a lot more efficient. And this kind of grip can also be applied to something like an arming sword. So instead of holding it in a hammer grip like that and then pivoting it forward, you hold it more like this. So that way it's again, more in line and you don't risk damaging your wrist as much. However, there are some swords that simply don't allow this, namely the Gladius. And we know that this was intended primarily for thrusting, not necessarily exclusively. So this, you, you just can't hold it in, in such a grip. It, it just doesn't work with this kind of shape since the, um, well, I don't think you can actually call this a guard. Let's just say the entire hilt is shaped in such a way that it really locks your hand into a hammer grip. There's really not much else you can do. So we can either, we, we don't know enough about how they fought to reconstruct exactly how they held them and how they moved and so on and so forth. At least as far as I know, there are really very limited sources and there are really no, um, manuals like we have from medieval times with pictures and descriptions and all that. So we can either assume that they just, they just weren't aware of that. They just 
thought, well, okay, this this feels a little crappy, but this this is just what we do, which I highly doubt, or they threw the thrust in a somewhat different way. So instead of going straight forward with this awkward wrist position, they would thrust more upwards like this. So you can see in this case, the force is going up like this, and this is closer to a 90 degree angle. So this is much stronger and still perfectly possible. It shortens the reach, of course, but information with the shields, you can afford to get very close and then thrust in this way or overhand would also be an option like this. So again, I don't know for sure if that's how they did it. This is just speculation. I can't prove it. Another way to safely thrust with a sword like this with a hammer grip would be pretty much like throwing a hook in boxing. So you would do it like this. That's not really an option in a tight formation. I don't think you just don't have the space to do that. And this just this wouldn't really work in confined space. But if you do have the space and you just want to do some, some thrusting tests just for fun, then this is also a way to do it. But uh, definitely not this, because that is just inviting trouble, injuries. You don't want that. All right, that's all I wanted to say. So thanks for watching.